In previous tutorials, I've shown you how you can format Excel graphs to make them look more appropriate. I've also shown you how you can add error bars to your graphs. During this tutorial, I plan to show you how you can add simple linear trend lines to graphs, how you can format those trend lines, and also how you can take into account anomalies amongst your data and also calculate the maximum, minimum and average gradient of your trend line, allowing you to calculate an uncertainty. To add a trend line to a graph, what you have to do is right click on one of the points in your data series. When you do that, it brings up a, uh, a series of options and the option we want to select is the option called Add Trend Line. Excel allows you to add various types of trend lines to data. However, Excel is not particularly good at fitting appropriate trend lines to most forms of data. And in most situations, a linear trend line is the only one it does a good job at. And actually, that's suitable for most data that you get in science experiments. To show you how trend lines can be inappropriate, though, let me just show you what happens if I try fitting a polynomial to the data. What I get is something that fits the data very well. It is nice and smooth, but it is obviously totally inappropriate. In this particular case, the trend line that I should be using is a straight line. So if I select linear and click OK, you'll see that I've got a much more appropriate trend line fitted to my data. Once you've added your trend line, there are a number of ways in which you can format the trend line. To format a trend line, first of all, right click on the trend line itself and you'll notice a dialog box opens allowing you to format the trend line which takes us back to here. At the top of this box there are three tabs. Patterns allows you to alter the appearance of your trend line, for example altering the style of the line and also altering the colour. I'm going to leave it as black for the time being. The type allows us to alter what type of trend line we're using and as I've said linear is almost always the most appropriate. And then finally you have the option to adjust various other parameters relating to the trend line. One of the most commonly used of these options is to display the equation on the chart. If I tick that and then click OK, you'll notice a little equation appears by the trend line which I can drag to the top of the chart. And this equation allows me to measure the gradient of my trend line, which in this case is 0.0111 um, in the units that I've displayed on the X and Y axis. The gradient often has physical significance. In this particular case, it's just equal to 1 divided by my average velocity. Other options. In addition to displaying the equation, it's possible to set an intercept on your graph. At the moment, my trend line is just based on the data series that I've got plotted on my graph. But often, linear lines will, by the very nature, pass through the origin. In order to make your line, force your line through the origin, you can set the intercept by ticking this little box here equal to zero. That can also be customized so that it goes through other points on the y-axis. So the number here refers to a value on the y-axis. Um, and if I do that, you'll notice the gradient of my trend line changes accordingly. In addition to setting an intercept, I can also forecast the trend line. What this means is I can extend the trend line forwards and backwards. In this particular case, I want to extend my trend line to the left so that it goes all the way to the origin. I do that by altering the value next to where it says backward by a number of units. The units that are used simply refer to the units on the x-axis scale. So if we look at my first data point, which is where the trend line begins, that data point occurs at 100. And so if I forecast backwards 100 units, you'll see that the trend line goes all the way back to the origin. Now, in this particular case, the origin actually is an inappropriate point for my data. The actual best fit is given when I exclude the origin from my point, so I'm going to remove that initial set intercept. You will have to use your own judgment as to whether you should set an intercept or not, but in this case, I don't wish to do so. And there we go. That's the best fit to my data. Now, there is one small problem that still remains as far as this data is concerned, and that is that there are actually two anomalous points um, in, 
amongst my data. And these anomalous points have, in this case, had the effect of altering the gradient of my trend line slightly. Ideally, I would like to be able to remove these anomalous points. The points are the third point um, along from the left and also the penultimate point, the one point in from the right-hand side. In order to exclude these points, what I have to do is go back to my source data. And the way I do that is by right-clicking on any of the points in the data series. Now, before I actually do something here, it's often helpful at this stage just to, un to identify the points in my actual original data. So I'm going to go to the sheet, and I'm just going to alter the colours of the data in the third row down, and also in the penultimate row, and I'm going to make them red. That will simply make it easier for me to identify them when excluding them from the trend line. In order to exclude them from the trend line, what I have to do is right click on one of the points and then go to the source data option. Now, if series isn't displayed, make sure that you click on the series tab at the top. What I'm going to do is now alter the values in the X values and Y values boxes in order to exclude the anomalous data. I do that, first of all, for the X value by clicking on the little button on the right hand side. When I do so, you will see it brings up the source data box here and you'll see that my original values are highlighted. What I have to do is reselect those values, excluding the values that I highlighted in red earlier. To do this, I'm just going to first of all select the first two values and now move my mouse down to the next value and this time I'm going to select it whilst holding the control key which means it will select it in addition to the previous data. And then finally, keeping the control key pressed, I'll select the final item. And then to confirm that selection, I'm going to press the button on the right hand side of the source data box. That will now enter that into the X value box. I now need to repeat this procedure for the Y values. So once again, I select the first two values without holding control, then press control, select the next three appropriate values, and then the final value, and then enter. Once I've done that, if I click OK, I'll be returned to the graph, and you'll no notice that the anomalous points, the third one and the penultimate one, have been removed from the graph, and the trend line has been adjusted to take into account the emission of those points. It's now a much more appropriate trend line. Now, although I've removed the anomalies from my graph and as a result produced a much more appropriate uh, trend line, I would like to add anomalies back onto the graph so that they can be seen in the context of the other data. In order to do this, I need to create a new data series that contains just those anomalous points. To do this, I'm going to right click on one of the points once again, select source data, but this time underneath where it says series I'm going to click add and you'll see that it's now created something called series 2 which is going to be my anomalous data and I now need to go to the X values box if I click on the button on the right hand side I can now go to my sheet and I can now select the X values of the anomalous data so it's this value here and then holding control I'm going to select the second anomaly. Remember to hold control when you select the two points and it's only those two points I want to select and now I'm going to click on the button on the right hand side of the X value source data box and it will enter those into the X values box on my source data dialog box. If I now do the same for Y values if I click on the box once again return to the sheet I'm now going to select the Y values that I want to use hold control key select the first one and the second one, those are the two that match the X values that I selected earlier, and then click Enter. If I now click OK, you'll see that I have two more points that are displayed in my dialog box, which are the two anomalies. During the second part of this tutorial, I'll show you how you can now add error bars and calculate the maximum minimum gradients of the trend lines that are possible.